Good evening and a very warm welcome to you wherever you may be tuning into this episode 5, season 2 of the Oz Crow Soccer Show. My name is Taunchy Prusats. It's an absolute pleasure to be here with you tonight. I am fighting the lurgy, the dreaded man flu, so it's going to be a bit hard for me. That's why I need my uh, uh, sidekick and, and partner in crime, Ante Grabolats, to help me deliver tonight's show. Ante, mate, I was this close to saying I just cannot do it, but then, you know, you stepped in and you said, oh, I'll carry you, you know, I did, this, did the, the substitution. But, we, but, but, mate, all jokes aside, we've got a big <laughs> show tonight, haven't we? Absolutely. Too much proper for you, uh, Taunchy. That's the thing. <laughs> Stay out of the draft, all right? Far out. Yeah, bloody to kill What's going on there? <laughs> Absolutely. No, thank you so much. Yeah, it is a huge show. We've had a huge reaction online already for our special guest. And we'd like to thank people who have shared the link and uh, particularly Pedro Collins for uh, putting our stream on Everything Croatian Facebook page as well and uh, everyone else who shared it. Thank you so much. And yes, we will be talking to that very special man, um, Mr. Josip Šimunić, uh, probably in about 20 minutes or so. Yeah, he'll be coming to us live from Zagreb, from his, uh, probably his stand in Zagreb, dare I say. It's over there. It's about uh, midday now as we speak. So he'll be joining us in about half an hour, but we've got a massive show to get through. Lots been happening. Good things. Oh, other things as well. But um, that's all going to be covered in our round out round up very, very shortly. So, folks, don't go away. We're going to get straight into it. We're going to take a short break. When we return, it's time for the news desk and the Australian-Croatian roundup with Ante. Don't go away, folks. Welcome to Slavicek Studio Architecture. Our approach combines modern design with harmonious solutions tailored to your unique needs. We listen closely to your vision and turn it into a functional, beautiful living environment that truly feels like home. Our designs cater to your needs and evolve with you over time, encouraging deeper connections with family and friends. Specializing in custom residential homes and boutique apartments, we balance luxury and comfort to create a welcoming atmosphere for everyone to enjoy. Discover a world of inviting and captivating design at www.slavicekstudio.com.au Contact us for a journey from idea to reality. Slavicek Studio Architecture, turning your dreams into reality. Yes, and welcome to the weekly roundup where we'll start in Tassie, where on the weekend we had the Australia Cup fixture between South Hobart and Glenorchy Knights. And unfortunately, Glenorchy went down by seven goals to two. However, they can get revenge this very Friday night because they take on South Hobart once more this Friday, May 5, 8.15 p.m. at the Darcy Street ground, which is the home of the Glenorchy Knights. Moving a bit north from Tassie to MPL Victoria, round 11, the Melbourne Knights had a one-all draw with Hume City. And North Geelong in the Croatian derby ended up defeating St. Albans by one goal to nil. And last night in the Australia Cup, St. Albans actually were victors 2-0 over Whittlesea United. But uh, Taunchy, you've got some footage there from the weekend talking to the North Geelong coach. Yeah, Tommy Gavran. We caught up with Tommy Gavran, the victorious coach of the North Geelong Warriors in the Croatian derby. This is what he had to say. Oh, I think the boys deserved it. I think uh, we've been building towards this. Uh, I just said to the boys, no changes for me. It's validation of the work that we're putting in. And sometimes you need that validation just to get a bit of confidence as well. And our confidence has been growing since, uh, you know, since I took over. So I'm truly happy for the boys. I thought we were uh, you know, the better side from the start to finish. And um, yeah, it's great to have supporters behind us now and actually clapping us off. Season defining, or is it just another one of those little kind of wins along the way? Uh, we've got a long way to go, mate. So it gets, it gets us up to uh, equal to, to St Albans now. So obviously back in the back in the mix now for um, you know for, for trying to get out of that bottom two. Um, so we're already just so to the boys, mate. We've got Oakley next Friday night. Enjoy today, and already focused on Oakley now next Friday night. And um, <laughs> a, a tough game. We weren't expecting anything 
um, other than a tough game against yeah. the sister club today. But um, at the end of the day, it was, you know, if you had to win, it's tough winning against your own sort, but nonetheless, it's a win. What does St Albans Dynamo need to do now to really save themselves from relegation? Oh, man, I'm not here to talk about St Albans, mate, so uh, that's for other people to comment on. What about North Geelong? What do you guys need yeah, to do? Yeah, just keep building. Keep building. Um, you know, it's good that we've got a couple of boys back as well from injury and suspension. Uh, we've got some consistency with our lineups, uh, consistency with uh, the way we're training at the moment, uh, trying to train with a bit of a purpose uh, and you know, against the team we're playing against. And um, yeah, just keep building, uh, instilling some confidence in the boys because you know, I believe that they're all good players and that they can play. And um, you know, and, and I like to play football too. So hopefully the uh, supporters have seen that. And uh, that was Tommy Gavran. So it's good that the that Dinamo did win um, in the Australia Cup, aren't as you mentioned. But look, you never love to see, you never like to see two Croatian clubs, you know, down near the foot of the competition standings. Look, it was a very important win for North Geelong, but um, St Albans at the moment are in a bit of a doldrums as well. But look, at the other end of the table, Melbourne Knights having one of their best seasons in the NPL Victoria competition. Um, behind the heavyweights, Avondale, South Melbourne and Oakley Cannon. So they're doing really, really well. And I think next week they've got a big game against Heidelberg United at home. Um, let's try and get as many people coming along to that game as possible. Yeah, absolutely. Very true, Taunchy. Uh Moving over to MPL 2, Dandenong City unfortunately lost 3-0 to Northcote in an Australia Cup, though. They did have a good 4-2 win last week against Upfield. So uh, Dandenong are sitting currently in sixth spot in MPL 2 in Victoria. And this week, we've got the fixtures. Melbourne Knights are away to Dandenong Thunder. That is on Saturday at 7.15 p.m. So on Sunday, we've got St. Albans at home at Churchill Reserve against Moreland. We've got the Oakley Cannons. They are going to host North Geelong. And, of course, we've got Dandenong as well. They're away to Bulleen. So um, get on out there, particularly the St. Albans fans, and uh, uh, to that particular home match. Yeah, there's games every night of the weekend, Friday night, Saturday, and Sunday. So you might be able to even jump out and watch multiple games um, on the weekend and uh, get away from the uh, wife and the kids. Uh, or <laughs> take the kids along with you. Maybe even take the wife with you. <laughs> That's right. Family, family atmosphere. Absolutely. Family atmosphere. Everyone get out there. Get, get some chivapa. Make sure, um, yeah. yeah, no one's cooking. Yeah, now moving, moving up to... north over the border uh, to Wollongong. Uh, Canberra before that. Uh, have we got Canberra up? So Canberra, Croatia, unfortunately, were postponed. And O'Connor Knights had the 2 1 win against Monaro Panthers. Oops. And O'Connor is sitting third. Go. And Canberra are currently sitting sixth with that match in hand. This weekend, Canberra are away um, to the Monaro Panthers and O'Connor Knights are at home against Garn That is on Saturday at 3 p.m. kickoff at O'Connor and close. So um, get on down there and support the O'Connor Knights and the Canberra Croatia team. And, of course, a Canberra Croatian legend we're going to be speaking to this very mm-hmm. evening. So looking forward to that. We'll yeah, definitely as have to ask him questions about um, his upbringing, his junior days. And, and speaking of which, folks, um, in the comments section, pop a question down that you may have for Josip Šimunic, that, um, and we'll try and pick the best questions and, and ask uh, the big man himself as well. But, uh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, moving along now. <laughs> absolutely. South Coast, there was no game, so South Coast still stays second from bottom, and they are at home against Wollongong United on Saturday night at 7 p.m. Hurstville Zagreb, well, they had another good victory this weekend. And so they actually um, ended up 2-0 victors. And um, that was, again, Sydney University. This this hasn't been updated. But this weekend, they do play at home. They've got three Sunday matches in a row um, on a Sunday. So 7 p.m. this Sunday, they're playing the old Parramatta Molina. You might remember them from oh, the NSL yes. days. The Malt- yes. Maltese Club, yeah. Well, that's an unusual time, is it, aren't it? 7 p.m. on a Sunday night up in Sydney? It is, yes. Not not, uh, not typical. However, um, where Zagreb are playing, I mean, they've got to uh, share the ground with multiple other teams. And uh, so, hence, they've got three Sunday matches in a row. So, good excuse to get out of the house on a, on a Sunday evening. But, yeah, it was a good win, 2-0, and that makes it three, three wins on the trot. Uh, two wins in the trot for them, sorry. And um, it was good to see Jacob Botic scoring another. So he's scoring quite a few this year. Uh, now we're moving to Sydney United. And yes, we 
took the big drive up north to the central coast and uh, United led for a long time, courtesy of a Chris Payne penalty in the first half. However, unfortunately, at the end, there were two late goals and um, Central Coast ended up 2-1 victors, which cost Sydney United quite a bit because they could have, um, you know, made some ground, particularly yeah. on league leaders Apia, but yeah. they are now in sixth position. And uh, as we mentioned, Penzas Park, which is the home of Hersel Zagreb, uh, Sydney United are actually playing there on Saturday night with a 7 p.m. kickoff against a new team in the MPL, which is St. George City, and they've um, progressed quite a bit and had quite a few promotions in the past few years. Is that the old St. George? Is that the um, reincarnation of the old St. George from the old NSL days? No. The majority? No. no, that's a separate club know. altogether. So this is actually St. George City and coached by um, ex City United player Mirko Yuril and also ex City United uh, player um, uh, is technical director Aita Gensch, who you ah, may remember. Right on, yes. Midfielder. Yes. Yeah, so um, well, they're doing great jobs there at St. George City. The good news for Sydney United is a victory over St George City on Saturday night at Penshurst Park. We'll see them leapfrog St George um, at least, you know, into a fifth spot, depending on how Sydney Sydney FC youth go. But, uh, yeah, an all-important game there. And let's hope that uh, S- um, Sydney United can, uh, can get back on the winner's list and get back on the winner's list nice and quickly, yeah. 100%. And now, moving further up north, I got a message from Karl Zhivkovic saying, make sure you have a page for Newcastle, Croatia. So here it is. Newcastle, Croatia got a big 5-2 <laughs> victory against North United Wolves. And there you go. North Newcastle sitting in fourth position currently, and they are away this weekend to Merriweather. So if you are in the Newcastle area, get on down to Jasmine Park Saturday at 2.30 p.m. and cheer on the team. Uh, Carl also sent me some footage of the way the girls team actually train and they actually end up end the training with a caller, which is uh, fantastic to see. And, and that could be something that, you know, maybe everyone <laughs> around all the grounds Love it. can Love uh, it. finish their training sessions on male or female. It doesn't matter, but um, that's great. <laughs> uh, oh, moving further up north to the Gold Coast, Gold Coast Knights with 4-1 winners over Peninsula Power. And they're currently in third position. And this Saturday, they are away to the Queensland Lions with a 4.45 p.m. kickoff. In South Australia, Adelaide, Croatia, keep doing the business uh, with a 5-0 victory over the Vipers. That's a huge victory. And this weekend, yeah, they sit second position. And this weekend, they're away to the Adelaide Cobras at Pro Paint and Panel Oval. I've never heard of that particular (laughs) field, but that would be uh, fantastic to go and visit, let me tell you. Pro paint and panel oval, a uh, bit of a tongue twister there, no doubt. But yeah, Adelaide Cobra is a big important game. This one, if the Raiders can get on back, can get really start knocking on the on the on the top there, that'll be absolutely fantastic. Is exactly what we want to see, and this is what we want to see. We want to see our Croatian clubs up near the top of the competition standings. Newcastle, right. Gold Coast Knights, Adelaide Raiders, they continue the trend. Western Knights, they do Western as well. Western Knights, absolutely. They continue the trend. A bit of a hiccup with a one all draw. It's a first draw of the season. They've got a four wins and a one draw so far. No losses. 17 goals for and two against. So we, we spoke with them a couple of weeks ago and they're keen on promotion. And, you know, so far so good. Let's hope they keep that trend happening. And Gwellop, they are the, you know, multiple gold masters last week, scoring four in the Australia Cup, now scoring four again this time against Fremantle City in a huge 4-3 win, and they're up to fifth position. So both of the teams are away this week. Fremantle City had three wins from four games prior to the clash against Guala, Croatia. So they were, you know, looking really, really good at one stage. And Guala, Croatia defeating them, that gives them a lot, a lot of confidence now moving into their next game. Um, which is um, uh, UWA Netherlands. Netherlands, exactly, who are in eighth position. And Gwellop are undefeated in their last four games. And, of course, the Knights are undefeated in their five games. So, Mm. you know, there you go. Looking good. uh, Let's continue that trend that's happening over in the West, um, boys. Um, The Australia Cup, moving on to the Australia Cup now. Yes, the Australia Cup does not stop. We've still got eight clubs alive. Eight Croatian clubs (laughs) are still alive, and let's hope they... Keep on being alive, Taunchy. There are quite a few matches in the coming um, week. So on Tuesday, May 9, 6.45 p.m. kickoff, it was confirmed today against the Northern Tigers. North Taramara Recreation Reserve. We beat them last year in the Cup. Let's hope that we can do that again. So get on out there and support the Sydney United team. 
North Geelong next Tuesday also at home yes. against Chisholm United. 8 p.m. kickoff at Elko Park. So get on down there and taunt you. Hopefully you'll you'll make the drive over to uh, to cheer on the boys. And Melbourne Knights Literally, are away. Five minutes away. <laughs> well, you can, you can walk there. And Practical Melbourne Knights, people. same night, are away to Box Hill United. That, that could be a multi there. I think Sydney United, North Geelong, and um, Melbourne Knights. Who knows? Yeah. And then, of so. course, <laughs> next Wednesday, Canberra, Croatia are at home to Gungahlin United. So um, let's hope that they can keep doing the business. And Gwellop are confirmed against Maddington White City, but to be advised of that actual kickoff date and time. So Australia Cup, it's fantastic. The midweek football uh, it reminds me of the old NSL days, the old NSL yeah. Cup and everything like that. And it's great, you know, David versus Goliath. And yeah. as we saw yeah. last year, Sydney United did the business. Hopefully more of our Croatian clubs can do the business as well. Well, the magic of the cup. And Auntie, while we're talking about the Australia Cup, I know in years gone by, a lot of the clubs have really, they, they haven't taken the, the cup seriously. And, and it kind of uh, irritates me a bit because in, in many ways, um, it's, well, without talking about this national second division, it's probably one of the few avenues that gives these clubs at state level now national exposure. And, um, yeah, we saw the fairy tale run the Sydney United last year um, had all the way to the to the to the final, and just just the whole journey was amazing. And we documented that, you know, speaking to Miro Vlastelitsa and um, um, Adrian Vlastelitsa from Sydney United, and Daniel Nizic as well, um, the Sydney United custodian. So it was great just to follow their whole journey, and um, and really, really, you know, I, this year we're seeing a lot more Croatian clubs around Australia getting to the latter stages of their respective state. Um, heats or phases, if you like. So hopefully this could be a record-breaking year of the number of Croatian, Australian or Australian Croatian clubs in that round of 32. That would be absolutely brilliant, wouldn't it? Yeah, that would be fantastic. I mean, you know, I was there when um, Hersel Zagreb <laughs> lost their match to Sydney University and, you know, it was like, you know, everything was deflated because uh, we know how important it is. And, and it is a little bit of an extra exposure for all of our clubs as well. So it's, um, you know, really fantastic. There's a reminder of all those cup games coming up over the next week. On Tuesday night, we've got one in Sydney, one in Geelong, one in Melbourne, and then uh, next Wednesday night in Canberra in the nation's capital and well of Croatia still to come. So that should be absolutely fantastic. We're going to take a very, very short break. When we return, it's the Croatian Roundup, and there's a lot happening in Croatia at the moment. So don't go away, folks. It's the Oz Crow Soccer Show. Plavi, 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 plavi. <laughs> yes, Dinamo uh, Pravi, yes. Dinamo Pravi, champion for the sixth year in a row. Dinamo Zagreb, crown champions. Where else but in the heart of split at the Poljud Stadium? Um, yes, what more can you say? They are just... Um, let's say Svemirski Brod is not Sviu. You know, like they're just a different world compared to everyone else in Croatia at the moment. And um, did you watch that game, the Heidel Dinamo game? I didn't watch the game, no. I saw it was a nil all draw. And um, yeah, obviously Dinamo took the title. So um, yeah, yeah, I didn't watch the game. Did you watch the game, Tonchi? I did, I did. And it wasn't your usual exciting derby game. I think Dinamo came there to just get a result. They got that result, they got what they wanted. Uh, hey, look, just sort of had their half chances. There was one goal that Jan Lakar, I think, scored. That was disallowed for offside. Um, and, and it was, actually, it was. You, you, you did have a look back and, and on the VAR, and sometimes the VAR, VAR doesn't get it right. A lot of the times the VAR doesn't get it right, but on that particular occasion, they did get it right. Um, but yeah, yeah. Well, did you see the footage of the players in their bus uh, in front of yeah. the Haydu, uh, in front of the Dynamo fans celebrating? Obviously, that yeah. was that was pretty cool footage yeah. and all the all the flares and things. So yeah, that was great. Yeah, 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 very, very, very memorable for those fans that travelled down south. But there was a there was a post match interview with Stefan Ristovsky um, that uh, Mir Tashuriak, the, the the darling of the Torcida and the Hajduk split fans, interviewed, um, and he and he made a really good comment, and it was. Um, I'll just take that um, 
this, um, graphic off. And he was just saying, look, she, she said to him, are you surprised with, you know, full stadium, the crowd being so parochial and so energetic? And he goes, no. Look, I know a lot of Dal Martinsi from around this year. I played with a lot of them. And there's a real feeling, there's a real connection between the people and the club. And, you know, and it's good. It is good for Croatian football that you've got full houses and this. And what's not good is the, the hatred, not the rivalry, the hatred. There's actual hatred. And majority of them are a minority. Majority of them are, uh, what's the word, just a small percentage. But, it, you know, like, and the media, like, I don't know, the media aren't it, leading up to it. They were just giving so much space to, to you know, the various supporters groups, you know, um, baiting each other and this and that. I, I just, from a distance, I wish that would stop. But, look, that's something we can chat to our next guest who's going to come on very shortly, who's the president of the newly promoted elect side for next year's Croatian um, Premier League, NK Rudesh, who are currently doing very, very well in the Croatian second division. We'll talk about that in, the, in a moment. But uh, Josip Šimunic, he'll be joining us very, very shortly. But... Um, Let's go through some of those other results of round 32 now. Four more rounds to go before the end, aren't there? <coughs> That's right. Istra defeated Shibanik three goals to nil, which is not good news for Shibanik because uh, they're looking uh, good for relegation at the moment. Uh, Slavin Belupo, they lost at home 3-1 to the Eka. So the Eka are sitting pretty in third position and uh, hopefully get a spot in uh, Europa. Varejdin, uh, they were losers at home, 3-1 to Osijek. And Lokomotiva two or draw with HNK Gorica. Yeah, Gorica have done really well in recent weeks. Um, their crazy coach Jelko Sopic, the one who uh, organised a training session <laughs> at two o'clock in the morning. Yeah, mate, it's obviously working because um, they've done really, really well in recent weeks. They, 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 I think they drew to uh, Dinamo. They drew against Lokomotiva. They've been getting some good results against some of the other teams. And look at the moment. Yes, they're only one point ahead of Shibenik at the moment and a bit of a better goal difference. But, yeah, i tell you what, though, um, that there is a real dogfight now at the other end of the table. And, look, it, it will be unfortunate if Shibenik, who has qualified for the final of the Croatian Cup, if they get relegated. But, as you said, Ante, it's looking like that is possibly what is going to happen, unfortunately. So, hopefully, yes. that's not going to be the case. But, yeah, it could well be. Got it's uh, undefeated in the last five when you look at that particular graphic. So, um, they're doing quite well. Yeah, yeah, there big you fight go. Back. Big, big fight back. Three, three wins and two draws. Oh, so, they're doing very well. All right, on to the second division, or the Prva Liga, as they call it. Only in Croatia, are we? <laughs> How confusing is that? The Croatian Prva Liga is, in fact, the second tier competition. And the Happens super sport, Prvatska Nogometna Liga, is actually like the Premier League, I suppose. So, um, if you want, if you get it that way, you, then it, it makes a, a fair bit of sense. Mate, Rudesh will explain it all to us. He'll, he'll yeah, explain he will. it all. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so Rudesh um, drew with Hrvatski Dragovolja. That's the bottom side. So probably a little bit of a hiccup there. 2 2 there in the Battle of the Zagreb Clubs. Kustoshia uh, lost to Croatia's Mijavci. I love that name, Kustoshia, a little suburb <laughs> in Zagreb. Dugopolje um, was defeated, defeated by Vukovar. And uh, Vukovar are an interesting side. They've got some very, very good players. I think they've got some Brazilian imports that are just absolutely dominant. They just don't have the finances and they don't have the infrastructure for the first division just yet. But uh, give it a couple of years, I reckon they'll be knocking on there. And Sibalia, now this is, yeah, Ante, Sibalia was my, uh, Josip Zilic's second favourite team last year. And they're sort of the team that everyone kind of likes, you know. Without, you know, um, they're kind of a safe second team. But um, they lost to Dubrava Zagreb on the weekend, 2 0. But uh, yeah, they, they almost cemented their spot in third spot. Another team that has really struggled financially. But uh, fingers crossed they get their stuff in order. And they, uh, they've they got some some of the best Naviachke Piesmes supporters songs, I tell you what. Yarun defeated Bielo Brito 2 1. And then a highly, high. Uh, Highly scoring draw between Solin and Orient. The Splitchani from Solin and the Riechani from Orient, 3-3. And then we've got the, the result. So um, now another little interesting thing that's happening in the last few weeks, that's happened uh, in the last few weeks, well, uh, in Croatia, is a new reality competition. Well, it's been held before, and it's similar to something that was held here in, 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 in Australia. Um, it's called Utakmitsa Jivota. And it's basically a reality show where if you're between 18 and 25, 
You can register to be part of this reality show in Zagreb, and it's basically a last man standing. So whoever is the last man standing, they will be awarded a one-year professional contract with Dinamo Zagreb. So any aspiring Australian-Croatian players who fancy themselves um, you know, doing, doing very well in this knockout competition, uh, the, if you go Utakmitsa Jivota, there's a website there, you can register – um, I think it's in June or mid-May to mid-June or late May to June. It's for about six weeks in Zagreb. So if you fancy your chances, uh, go for it, guys. We'd love to maybe have someone. And speaking of that reality show, I think the Australian version, well, the winner of one of the competitions actually ended up at Dandenong City. Hey, to Luke Pilkington, if I'm not mistaken. He did. He yeah. did, yes. I remember that Foxtel show and he got a contract with the Melbourne Victory and then he ended up at uh, a couple of... Victorian Premier League teams, yes. Yeah, absolutely. All right, cool. We're going to take a very, very short break, folks. When we return, we'll be crossing live to Zagreb, where we'll be speaking to the newly appointed president. That's right, you heard that, president of NK Rudesh, after a very, very um, illustrious, successful playing career, coaching career as well. He's now an administrator, and I think this must be, honestly, this must be the first time an Australian-Croatian um, has has well, one of the very few times that a Croatian, uh, that an Australian footballer has not only been a player, but a coach, but also an administrator and a successful one at that. Uh, Josip Šimunić will be joining us shortly after the break. Don't go away, folks. Don't go away. Looking forward to it. Welcome to Slavicek Studio Architecture. Our approach combines modern design with harmonious solutions tailored to your unique needs. We listen closely to your vision and turn it into a functional, beautiful living environment that truly feels like home. Our designs cater to your needs and evolve with you over time, encouraging deeper connections with family and friends. Specializing in custom residential homes and boutique apartments, we balance luxury and comfort to create a welcoming atmosphere for everyone to enjoy. Discover a world of inviting and captivating design at www.slavicekstudio.com.au. Contact us for a journey from idea to reality. Slavicek Studio Architecture, turning your dreams into reality. Well, it's a great pleasure to introduce our guest for tonight, all the way from Zagreb, Croatia. He's the uh, undisputed Minister for Defence, Minister Obrane, and he's also the new, newly appointed president of Zagreb Club, NK Rudesh, Josip Šimunić. Josip, welcome to the Ozcro Soccer Show. Welcome back to the Ozcro Soccer Show, because we did have you on early in the piece last year. Thank you for calling me. Uh, I'd like to say hello to all the guests of um, Oz, Oz Crow uh, Soccer Show. Um, it's nice to be on. Thanks, Tonche. Thanks, Ante. Thanks for calling me. Good on you, mate. Well, first of all, um, up until a month ago or thereabouts, you were the um, coach of the Croatian under-19 uh, youth team. Um, and now you've, um, you've, you've, you've departed that position. And now you're a president of... Enkar Rudesh, which is, we'll talk about that club, but how did this all come about? Um, we know you had some friends heavily involved at Rudesh. Was that the sort of the main thing that, that got you involved over um, at the club? Well, <clears throat> I've been, um, I, I officially couldn't be involved with um, with a club because of my role at the Harness with the under-19s because uh, then it could be potentially considered a conflict of interest. Mm. So I've basically been, monitoring the club for, for the last two and a half, three years. Um, I play for the veterans team there, uh, Rudesh Sios, it's called. And, uh, yeah, basically, that's uh, I, I've been monitoring what they've been doing for the last few years. I've been learning what they've been doing. I've been learning how a club functions. And uh, when I got the call uh, and asked if I'd love to be uh, like to be the president, uh, I took it straight away. It's, uh, it's, a, it's, a big, um, it's a big thing for me. I'd like to also just see... Uh, not not just from a pl player's perspective, uh, 
how, how football functions. Now I've seen it from a coaching side and now I'm going to see it from an administrative side. So I'm really looking forward to it. Um, we've got, um, we still have to get, I think, two more points to be 100% sure. So if we win on Saturday, then uh, that's it because uh, uh, Vukovar uh, is not, they haven't got the license for the first division. So um, then uh, we should be uh, mathematically then qualified for, for the first division. So. So your first official function, Josip, could be to organise a big party, right? Well, that's uh, that's that's going to be. Um, <laughs> with, I'm actually not thinking about it at the moment. We first, I've learned through through football that you have to uh, play to the to the end until the referee blows the whistle, and uh, on the field, off the field, we have to always think like that. We have to be serious, and um, yeah. But I'm I'm pretty sure there's going to be a nice nice. Uh, I'm not going to say a little party, probably big party in Rudesh. So. Yeah. Now tell us a little bit more, Josipe, about about NK Rudesh. It's a club in in Western Zagreb, and it has been in the elite competition before. I think six, seven, eight years ago, or something like that. But it's got a motto: "Total no drugi o drugi." Totally different from others. Tell us more about this club and and what makes it so different, so unique in the Croatian uh, football um, kaleidoscope. Well, firstly, it's a uh, it's a small uh, small club in the Kvart. Um, about twenty something years ago, I don't know exactly how many years ago. Uh, there was the old president. He unfortunately passed away a few months ago. Uh, Ivan Knezovic took over the club, uh, running it all the way from the fifth or the sixth division all the way up to the to the first division. Um, they stayed up for one year, and then the second year they unfortunately fell out. And then they basically, um, then they basically struggled for those few years after that. Then there was COVID in, in between. Um, we basically uh, got in, got in there um, two and a half, three years ago. The boys came there. I was always on the side, uh, helping them. And um, <clears throat> basically, it's gone from there. It's a it's a it's a great little uh, quad. My Korm and Korma um, from Australia. They lived there for a few years, so I know the quad very very well. And um, it's just a, it's a sim, sim, very sim, sim, uh, sympathetic um, part part of town. Um, yeah, a lot of people from there have um, who were born there have gone on. They've done very successful things in whatever they do, and a lot of people are involved uh, also in the club who would like to help the club. Uh, the, the main the main um, thing for us is uh, that we we. Um, Give the young kids a chance. We have 520 kids in the school, the football school, and Gosh. for me, that's wow. To, to, to you, honestly, that's for me the most important thing. Um, so the kids um, uh, from the pedagogy side, the the pediatric side, that they're um, that, that, that that they become yeah. you know, good people that, that know how to function within a team, and that everyone respects everyone. And uh, that's for me the most important thing. Whether they're going to become one day a player or not, a professional player, that's that's honestly that's for me a lot less important. But um, now going back to the the motto, totally total uh, drugaccio drugi, um, we basically because of a lot of um, negative things in the past in football, uh, we basically um, took that motto because we want to do the things uh, the right way and uh, how it should be done. Um, not just from a from a football perspective, uh, not from a business perspective. Uh, more importantly, from a moral perspective. So that's the thing that's uh, that motivates, motivates us the most. And um, we're up up to now. We've been, I think, done a great job. And uh, our our job is uh, not finished. We want to we want to stay around for a while. We don't want to just uh, be here for a few years. We want to actually stay around for a long time. And our door is open to everyone. Um, we've showed that in the past uh, with, with um, putting on Facebook um, posts. Uh, anyone can come to, uh, whoever wants to can come for a, for a trial to Um And that's, uh, that basically goes, goes out to everyone. In, in, in Australia, in Croatia, in Canada, uh, in Australia, uh, sorry, I said Australia, in America, everywhere in the whole world, our doors are open to everyone. That's brilliant. Uh, well, you mentioned that Josip, um, so you're in the second division now. If you do get promoted, which you should get promoted, and you have played in the Croatian first division before, you know what's it going to take to stay there for a couple of years? Because you don't want to be one of these clubs that go up and down. Yeah. Right? yeah. Well, it all there's a lot of things that um, that it depends on. Uh, our obviously our goal is to try and stay up there. 
uh, but more importantly, it's also to promote uh, younger players, give kids a chance who who have got a lot of potential, uh, and that's where the scouting part comes in. Uh, if we do our scouting very well, um, I think I think we'll do okay. And and what's the worst thing that can happen? Uh, if if for whatever reason uh, it doesn't go how we thought, we fall out. At least we've promoted a few younger younger players, and and that's that's the most important thing. I've I've noticed in the last few years, uh, everyone in Croatia at least talks about uh, their football schools and and promoting young players and everything, but no one or no one actually has is brave enough to do it. Uh, I've seen now, uh, we've all seen now, um, for instance, an example in, in Irijeka, um, Sergei Yakirovic, uh, who's a very good friend of mine, who's an excellent coach. Uh, he's come in from the beginning, he's pushed all young players, and he's doing a, he's doing a great job, and, and I, I take my hat off to him, and uh, I, I'm of the opinion that that should happen, happen more and more. And um, like I said, a lot of people talk about it, but no one really um, goes, that, goes that next step and, and gives those kids a chance. Well, we've seen um, in Karul Desh become as you, uh, a destination club for a couple of Australian Croatians. I think the Popovic boys are from Tony Popovic's sons were there. I think yeah. one of them's still there. Is that right, Gabriel? If I'm not mistaken, yeah, Gabriel's still there. Yeah, yeah. 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 And, and I'm pretty sure there was a, someone else from Sydney that was there at one stage or another. And there might be a few couple in the juniors as well. But um, that, that's that's great to see that link happening. And, and one of our one of our um, um, uh, close colleagues, Josip. Zilic actually asked this question or sent this question in um, for Josip. Now that you're holding this role, will that mean you won't be involved in future talent ID camps or will you be doing it with a Rudesh perspective now? I guess he's probably alluding to the talent camps that we had in Sydney and Melbourne earlier this year. Yeah, I, I personally, um, I'm, I'm always, uh, whenever I, I can help, I'm always there. Um, the the HNS knows that as well. Uh, I'm the op- but my, my role here is, uh, is purely, uh, my interest is at the moment, uh, in Karudesh, and that's I've um, I've taken this position on uh, for a reason. I see a lot of potential here, and I'll be doing from from in Karudesh, uh, side uh, a lot lot of that talent identification stuff uh, through in Karudesh. That's my first and main interest. Uh, yeah. And who are some of the players that are really excelling this year that you know will probably make that step up to the first division next year? Well, we have we have a few young players. We have our, our goalkeepers uh, doing really well. He's been keeping now for two years. Um, Mali Kral, uh, he's he's a he's a good goalkeeper. Uh, he's doing really really well. We have a, a stopper, uh, Pavlek. He's a left-sided stopper. He's done exceptionally well. And we have we have a few midfielders, uh, Tomislav Sabljinovic, um, uh, Luka Pasaricek. They're doing well. And our striker, um, Gudel, uh, Tomislav Gudel. He's he's done really really well. Uh, we have we've, we're doing well. We've got a, a, lot, a lot, pretty large squad. We've probably got the I'd say the strongest squad in the second division. We have a lot of depth, and I think that's one of the reason reasons why we've now um, gone. Uh, now we're, we're seven points in front of uh, Vukovar, and uh, thirteen in front of Tsibalia. That's I think why we've gone up because our s- squad is very very strong, and and that's probably the reason or main reason that we're that we're we're doing well in the second division. Now, apart, apart from those players off the field as well, now there's a real good Australian-Croatian connection with your, your, your football manager, your, your general manager, Silvio Maric, who's appeared on several podcasts, both with yourself on Sports Genosti recently and with our Mark Viduka. And he's such an entertaining fellow, Mara. Um, but um, he's, his wealth of knowledge, his contacts, his, his experience as well, um, being the football head, there's Fabian Komjenovic, I think, who heads the um, mm-hmm. academy and youth programs as well, as well as a veteran coach, Davor Mladina. Having those people who are really the cream of the crop of, of, of Zagreb and Croatian football must make things really easier. But at the same time, obviously, your, your, your ambitions are really, really high at the same time. How does the rest of the club fit in with all of those people's professionalism and are they are they starting to sort I, of pull other parts of the I, club up as well? I think so. I think um, I think we've sent a, a lot of um, messages out to everyone that we're serious. Uh, and just by bringing these people in, we're showing that we're we're serious. There's no, um, it, it's not not just the. Uh, like a like a, a sling. It's 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 something that we want to do serious for a long time, and we want we need substance. And to have substance, you need knowledge, and we need people who have who have been there, done that. We need people to uh, who also uh, not just as as people that are really good at what they do. We need people who are 
uh, characters who are positive people and who are also um, who also become uh, uh, lead, lead the way, be an influence to other people, and, yeah. and they're leading the way. So we, we've got a great bunch of people there. Uh, I'm of the opinion that we've still got a lot of a lot, lot of things to, to fix up, still, especially in our school, and we'll do that. And uh, you can't fix things over, up overnight with a with a football school. It takes uh, years to, to fix up, but the first uh, step is to install those people who have the knowledge, and then it, the rest of it's done on the field. Um, we can talk all we want now. Uh, here on, on in the newspapers, uh, here on, on this uh, on on your show, uh, that doesn't mean nothing. Uh, the yeah. work has to be done on the field, yeah. and um, that's that's the thing where we're, we're we're ready to ready to do that. People are already working, but um, the ones who work the most, the ones who want it, something the most, they're the ones who are going to succeed. So we want to bring this type of mentality uh, to our club that uh, when anyone comes to visit, that they that they straight away feel the Feel that mentality uh, from from the moment they step foot on on the in the club at the, at the club at Enkadulish. Yeah, I think they've done a fantastic job in um, getting you as a president because um, you you know definitely will uh, make sure that that occurs. Um, Joseph, what are the challenges with Croatian domestic football like for the clubs? What, what what are the challenges there currently? You know, is it financial? Is it distance? Is it you know also is it the fact that you know the clubs aren't making Europe enough? You know. We've predominantly got only one team dominating what are the things that you see as the biggest challenges there's there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of um uh, i'd say challenges there um mm. firstly for the financial part uh no one gives you nothing f uh, for nothing there's there's um you have a lot of potential sponsors but uh you have people who who understand the marketing side and and who are going to bring other people and sponsors together and then maybe they can do business together but um I think there's another big problem is the, the infrastructure. Um, everyone talks about it. Everyone's yeah. been talking about it for the last I don't know how many years, and um, and at the end of the day, uh, it's slowly coming there. The uh, the harness through a lot of uh, help through FIFA and UEFA. Uh, every year they're giving uh, it, there's seven or eight uh, they're donating um, uh, what do you call them um, the turf fields the uh, uh, the hybrid turf, yeah, yeah. turf fields to, to, to certain teams different parts of Croatia uh, it's starting it there's, there's a bit going on but uh, honestly there's got there's a lot more work to be done um, we uh, for an example uh, Enka Rudesh wants to play we would like to play uh, at our stadium in Rudesh uh, we have problems there because um, uh, we need to have reflectors we need to make it have a bigger um, what do you call it grandstand, grandstand yeah yeah and basically, we're we're prepared. We have we have everything ready to go. We have people who are ready to to invest there, and uh, for the interest of the quart, uh, for the quart, uh, like I told you, there's a lot of successful people uh, who were born in Rudesh and who are very very um, uh, who have a lot of uh, contacts to contact to the clubs. Yeah, uh, to the club, the kids are playing uh, in in the in the juniors that with us and they're willing to help as much as they can uh, so what's the what's the sticking yeah. point then what what really is holding everything up and don't tell me croatian bureaucracy <laughs> yeah, listen i don't want to get into, involved in that i i just think it's um i, I don't even want to talk about the, the negative stuff anymore yeah yeah uh, we're prepared to do something very positive and um we're like i said we're ready uh, the grad zagreb the actual city does not have to pay one euro um, we've got that all, all, all ready to go. All we need is that we need the, the dozvole. We need the, they're, they're basically their blessing. And, um, yep. and I hope, I hope uh, I've just started a few weeks ago. Uh, we're going to start knocking on their door. I hope that they're ready and willing to help us because at the end of the day, it's, it's going to, we're going to be doing them a favor. At the end of the day, everyone's going to be doing, uh, every, every, every other one a favor. So it's, it's all yeah. good for the. For the for the community, it's all good for football, and uh, I, I just hope that they're they're listening out to this show because uh, I'm going to be I'm going to be uh, knocking on their door very very often. Well, we, we certainly look forward to getting an update, maybe in a couple of weeks, couple of months, or whatever the case may be, to see what the latest with regard to that is. In the meantime, assuming Rudesh does get promoted, um, it won't be a big turnaround. The new season starts in July. What's what's the um, what's the what's the uh, contingency? Will will Rudesh have to play out of Kranjevic Stadium yeah. or Maximi? So basically, uh, at the moment, we've um, we've already we've received our license for the first division. Yep. We'll be playing at Uh Like I said, uh, I've already said this uh, last week. We're going to be having thirty-six away games, and that's I think one also reason yeah. that that. 
that it will be very important for us to have an, uh, our own field, uh, our own stadium, and to play 18 games in in, uh, in uh, at our stadium. And that's, yeah. uh, I think, a big disadvantage for us. But uh, how they say, we'll um, we'll adapt. It is how it is. But uh, hopefully, in the future, we can. We can um, get uh, we stay in the first division and then we can roll out to play at our own stadium. Yeah, we're talking with uh, Josip Šimonić, the newly appointed president of um, NK Rudes from Zagreb, Canberra born, played at the Knights. And uh, we're going to take a short break. When we return, we'll ask Josip a little bit about his career um, and some advice that he would give for young aspiring Australian Croatia players looking to make it big in Europe. Don't go away, folks. We'll be right back with the Ozcro Soccer Show. Welcome to Slavicek Studio Architecture. Our approach combines modern design with harmonious solutions tailored to your unique needs. We listen closely to your vision and turn it into a functional, beautiful living environment that truly feels like home. Our designs cater to your needs and evolve with you over time, encouraging deeper connections with family and friends. Specializing in custom residential homes and boutique apartments, we balance luxury and comfort to create a welcoming atmosphere for everyone to enjoy. Discover a world of inviting and captivating design at www.slavicekstudio.com.au. Contact us for a journey from idea to reality. Slavicek Studio Architecture, turning your dreams into reality. Welcome back to the show, and we've got special guest Josip Šimonić on the line live from Zagreb. <laughs> Josip, obviously you've been involved with the under-19s uh, until recently, and of course, you know, Hayduk did so well in making the final of the Euros. You spoke about the future that you want to, um, you know, promote a lot of youth at Rudesh. So the future of Croatian look, uh, football in terms of those particular talent looks looks really good. Well, like, like I said before, uh, us talking about it, it's all beautiful and nice, but uh, the work's being done on the field, um, mm. in their trainings, in the games. Uh, Hajduk done exceptionally well this year. Uh, I think that the big, a big, um, uh, someone who had a huge influence and a huge, uh, for me, who had a, uh, the biggest uh, influence on that team is, was their coach, Marian Budimir. Uh, he's done an exceptional job. Uh, he's been doing the last three or four years. Uh, he's been doing a great job with with Hajduk Juniors, and um, uh, not just uh, not just the players did well. Now I think that he's from the from Hajduk. Uh, he's their coach, and and I think that they've got a lot with Marian in the future. I I believe, and uh, he he should get a chance to to be a coach one day with the first team. Uh, it, it all looks great. It all looks beautiful, but um, the, the work has to be done every single day. Uh, I'm a big, big believer in um, a lot of these kids uh, when they read their, news, the, their name in the paper and they see that all these clubs want them and, and, and it all, it's all nice to hear and nice to read. But uh, I'm a big believer in that, that, that all, all that stuff should be left uh, on the side. They should do that as, as least as possible, less as possible, because um, tomorrow is the next training and the day after that's the next training. And um, you have to just work hard. Do the best you can to become better every single day. And if you have that mentality, um, you, you should be right. Yeah, we now, see a lot of players yeah, sorry. who... Um, sorry, I was just going to say, we see a lot of players who, you know, make the World Youth Championships and things, and then their senior career doesn't actually kick on. Yeah. So um, hopefully that doesn't happen in, the, in these particular cases. If, sorry, if, uh, <laughs> if the greatest Croatian player of all time, if Luka Modic can, can uh, train every single day to try and become better tomorrow and the day after as a 37 year old then then uh, these 17 or 16 or 18 year old kids um i, I don't know what 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 they're looking at mate. i don't yeah. know what they think they are mate. so it's all hard work and and focus and um yeah everything else at the end of the day the hard work will will pay off sooner or later now Josip, you went through the ais system here in australia growing up in canberra and i'm really keen to find out a little bit more about the school and all that, that, that each club over there runs and, and the professional setup. I mean, um, about four or five years ago, I went to a, a sports conference in Melbourne, and there was an Englishman there from one of the academy clubs in, in, in around the Manchester area. He said something like 0.01 or 1% of all players in the academies 
in now academies, not talking just clubs in general, but the academy system in England, make it to professional level. Now, obviously, Croatia got such a small population, four million, and we we constantly have these young players coming up through the ranks, whether it be cadetti, juniori, or the seniori. We've always got this production line of young talent. And people have asked, what is it that they do so well in Croatia? Is it the system that is run with the Škola <clears throat> Nogometa? I mean, because you, you basically got to be a professional football coach to be employed by one of these, don't you? I, I believe that's – I've been asked that question a lot of times yeah. in the last uh, year or so. I personally believe that in our genetics, we're very talented. We're, we've got something – that's, that's something that, that I can't explain or that anyone can explain. Uh, when you would see the, the infrastructure we have in the whole of Croatia, uh, it, where anyone would come from, from any country and, and see what we have, they'd say that's impossible. It's actually impossible that that many players come out. Now, uh, we're, we're very, very lucky. We're, we're blessed to have a national team that makes every single World Cup, mm. every single Euros, uh, and, and then the last two World Cups you've seen, that's, that's amazing what, what Zlatko Dalic has done with the team. Uh, that, that's absolutely amazing. That's extraordinary. Um, when, when you see what they've done, uh, then, then everything looks great. But what people do forget is that um, we have talented players who, who uh, I believe should be playing more, more and more in the first division in, the, in our Pirovahanel. Or by sort of the Super Sport League, whatever it's called. Sorry, I apologise. Uh, they should be, be getting, getting pushed more. Uh, instead, a lot of players go through the system. And they eventually go overseas somewhere, and that's where they actually um, that's where they actually see what it's all about. I'm not saying that it's not in Croatia like that, but uh, in Croatia, we're very tolerant uh, to an extent where we say, "Okay, you're young. You're the project of the club." Okay, when they go overseas, it's like you're just one of 30 other players. And yeah. if you don't do your job there, next week you're not playing. And I think that's when it becomes a reality to everyone. Uh, there's no more, there's no more, um, this is no more fun in games. Uh, this is serious. If you want to make it, this is what it's going to take. If not, then the, the another, another player is going to come in and, and you just, they just forget about you. And I think that when all, all of, a lot of these young players go overseas, that's where I think that they, they make that next step. Uh, Example, Luka Modric went to, from Dinamo Zagreb to Tottenham. The first six months was very difficult for him. But because he's a great player, uh, he, he became one of the best or the best player in, in England. He went to Real Madrid. The first six months was difficult. After that, he's the best player in the world. Yeah. Uh, these things, uh, I believe, uh, if you understand what what is going on as a player, if you're prepared to go all the way to give your best, um, you, you should you shouldn't um, you, you shouldn't be scared. Mate. You've got you've got nothing to be scared about, and that's where all these players come out of. A lot of them come out of nowhere. Who have some example? I, I don't want to uh, say that that we we did a better job than the people who were before. But in the under 19s last year, we had eight or nine players. I, I, I don't want to make a mistake. I think it was eight players who before we called them. Uh, in, the, in the actual final squad for the elite round, they weren't even in the harness. Uh, they weren't even in the source stuff, in the under 15s, under 17s. Uh, what, what I don't want to, that's, that's no, um, that's no, um, that's, that, I'm not trying to say that people before me didn't do, do a good or a yeah, bad job. Yeah, no disrespect to them. Say that it, it's just that final line that um, when those kids do get a chance, they do well, and now four four of them are playing uh, standardly for the under twenty ones, and I think that's that's the, that's the key there. Um, a lot of the things outside the football field, managers, agents. Uh, unfortunately, I say this: every parent loves their kid the, the most, but even a lot of parents make a lot of problems for for their kids with, with the best intentions. Um, the football part is is what should be the most important. It shouldn't be who's son, uh, daughter, I don't know whose, father's, uh, whatever. It should be who's the best and who's got yeah. the best attitude and those kids should be given a fair chance. Yeah, well said. Absolutely, well said. And that's probably how the Melbourne Knights spotted you. Is that right, Yosip? Is, you know, you were given that opportunity by the Knights because, um, 
you know, you worked hard, made your way into the AIS, and then um, the Melbourne Knights spotted you. Is that the way it worked? Of course, I'm, and I'm I'm grateful. I'm so grateful. Uh, I'll be grateful to the till I live uh, for the chance that I got at, at Melbourne Knights. Um, uh, people people um, people always say, ah, oh, you know. You're, you're talented, you're good enough, everything, but someone had to have given you that chance. And, and I was an 18-year-old then when I came, well, actually 17 years and, and 11 months when I came to Melbourne Knights. And I was there for a year and eight or nine months. And that was probably one of the one of the nicest, the most beautiful times of my, my whole life. It was a great time in Melbourne. Uh, I had a great time in Melbourne and from the f- football side and, and outside football. And, um, and and I'm very grateful for that, for that uh, chance that Melbourne Knights gave me. Um, here's a couple of questions from Petar Finka, one of our viewers. A couple of questions for Joe. Growing up as a kid, who was your favourite Australian player you looked up to? Ooh, there was a few. <laughs> uh, in the in the okay in the eighty the late eighties, I was like nine or ten, eighty eight, eighty seven, eighty eight. Uh, I'd have to say Josip Biskic. He was yeah, for great me, player. Yeah, great, yeah. Player. great player, and, and he'd he done exceptionally well. Later on, uh, okay, 88, there was uh, Vedran Rožić at uh, City yeah. United, City Croatia back then. He was a great Fantastic. player. Um, and then in the 90s, I'd have to say Mark Taduka, uh, Mark Silic. Uh, they're, they're this, I played with these guys, and they're, 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 they're great players. I was always younger than them, and yeah. uh, always looked up to them. Well, apparently, um, according to um, our last last year's co-host, Josip Zilic, who actually visited um, Rudesh last year, and he caught up with uh, Alan Kraljevic, who's involved with the juniors there. But he also mentions Paul Magdic, former Melbourne Knights fullback, now has his son involved there at, at Rudesh and lives close by. Have you had a chance to catch up with him? Um, I, have, been, I have. Yeah. I have. I keep uh, always keep in contact with Paul. I'm actually going to meet up with him on Friday morning for a coffee. So, oh, nice. um, yeah, Paul. Paul's come back. He's loving it here. Um, it's 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 a beautiful place to live. Uh, like I said, outdoors are always open to everyone. Uh, his son's playing there. And his son's uh, probably a very 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 big talent. So there uh, you go. One to keep an eye on. And, and apparently, Yosip Yosip goes. There's a fantastic barbecue grill restaurant on the same premises as the club. It's difficult to concentrate on the park with those great cooking smells <laughs> in the air. Probably a little reminiscent of Summer Street when you get the uh, the old guys cooking the lamb on the spit. Steak sandwiches. The, the, the steak yeah, sandwiches. Oh, man, and it wafts over, wafts over. Very difficult, very difficult. But, um, but, Yossip, no, you, Yossip, you mentioned uh, before the great achievements we've had quite recently in the World Cups. But in, when you were playing for the Croatian national team, one of the opportunities I always think 2008 was a lost opportunity. Do you feel that way as well? That that game against Turkey where we drew of course, uh, one all. That, that that always uh, it's always in the back of my head somewhere, and, and whenever I think about it, whenever someone mentions it, uh, it just it's it's a sad. Uh, that's life, mate. That's life. You don't always have. Um, not always the best team wins in football, uh, and that's unfortunately something that that we can't change. Uh, we can just look back on it. On it. Uh, and and I think you know maybe we had a bad luck back then, but uh, now we're having a, a lot of good luck uh, in the last few World Cups. So you know, what goes around comes around, mate. That's 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 life, and uh, you're sometimes positive, sometimes negative. But we always got to keep going forward, mate. Yeah. What are now, some of the highlights sorry. when you think back on your career, whether it be club? You mentioned Melbourne Knights, obviously your Croatian national team. What are the highlights? What are the things you're most proud of? No, what I'm, I'm just I'm proud of. Uh, I had a, a lot of um, an influence on a lot of younger players, which I played with. Uh, I'm, I'm proud of that because um, I, I always pushed them. I always gave them confidence. Uh, I gave them the, the courage as well. I helped them to have more courage, not to not to be scared to make a mistake. Um, I'm, 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 I'm proud of all that, mate. I'm, I'm, I'm thankful and grateful to my parents for, for everything, my family. Um, I have have my my family as well. I've got a few three kids here. Um, next to Jeevi is Dravi, and I think that's the biggest achievement in in, in my yeah. life, mate. That's the sweet Jeevi is Dravi, yeah. and that they become my kids become good good people. Yeah, absolutely. Well now, on speaking of kids, on last week's show we had we were joined by Josip Lončarić and Petar Markovic, the co coaches of the Australian Croatian under select team that went to Vukovar 
Um, they were selected as part of that ID process um, at Sydney and Melbourne. Mate, it must uh, did you did you get a chance to pop over to Vukovar or did you get a chance to? Uh, I did. The I did on that Saturday. I went past, the, I watched the game in the morning, and then in the evening we had a, a, a lovely dinner all together at yeah. the Josic, Josic Vinaria. So that's in Baranya. Yeah. Uh, we had a nice uh, nice you know catch up. And you know what? The, the kids did well there, mate. They they, they were physically uh, the boys here in Croatia were probably a little bit bigger and stronger and quicker. But um, there, there's there's some good kids in Australia. They um, they just got to keep going. Um, and and at that that age group, when you're a little bit bigger and a little bit quicker than, than the, your opponent, that's a big advantage. Big you advantage, you see yeah. the difference. But yeah. um, I want to see those kids in four or five years, and we'll see who's bigger and stronger then, mate. Yeah, absolutely. And, and if you haven't, folks, if you haven't um, caught that interview with uh, Petar and Josip, go on to our YouTube channel, a great interview. And they've already started putting plans into place for next year and the year after and the year after. And um, I know we had Pavi Yusup on one, one show saying that they're hoping to make it, you know, bigger and better each week. But, um, mate, that, that – for you, that must sort of be a real sense of pride because you had that little no, big part to play as well. Um, dare I say you're probably heavily involved in, in, in the original sort of concept of bringing it down here in Australia. But that must, you know, there'll be generations and generations of young Australian Croatian kids going to Croatia and that may well be their first connection with Croatia. But in years to come, it's that one thing that just defines their whole whole being, isn't it? Well, I've been talking for a long time. I talked to a lot of people in the service and said they've got to maybe try and do things. I've been mentioning it always. And last year was the first time in Canada and America and Australia that they've actually done the camps. Uh, I was honoured to be also part of the camp in Australia. And like I said, I hope that it stays like that every single year because there's always good kids really? out there. And it, it's something also for those kids to look forward to and, 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 a, and a, a bit of additional motivation uh, someone's going to be coming coming to watch me. I've got to do my best. I've got to get better. And, it's, and I think it's also important for the Australian Croatian clubs um, to bring back that um, bring back those, those um, how it was how it was 20, yeah. 30 years ago, forty years ago. Yeah, yeah. On um, mate, it's always a pleasure having you on the show. Uh, we wish you all the very very best in your new role as a president of Enkar Rudesh. We will definitely be following Rudesh from afar. And we look forward to seeing Rudesh in, in the Croatian Premier League next season. Uh, we talk about Sibalia Vinkovci being mine and Josip's second favourite team. You know, last year, I think Rudesh is, uh, is now ascended to that second favourite status team Absolutely. for a lot of Australian Croatians. Eh? All of the Australian Croatians, definitely. Yes. Yeah. Drukci or Drugi. Yeah. On that note, Josip, once again, wish you all the best. Do say hi to Paul Mantic. A lovely, oh, lovely chap, and uh, and uh, hey, we... how did you how did you go in the Melbourne Knights uh, trivia night? Oh, you did you go on that? Yeah, go? you know we were second. We were second, <laughs> but you know <laughs> you know the you much. know what the worst thing was. I, I don't want what? to mention any names, but a lot of a lot of people I've seen they were using their their phones to Google. Oh, it, that's it, cheating! But it doesn't matter. <laughs> I, I have to yeah. admit that I use my phone a few times as well. So, uh, <laughs> hey, were you a question? Were you a question on the trivia night? Did anyone did did you become a question? Um, actually. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, no, I don't think so. No, I don't. Uh, that'd, that'd be easy. That, that's too easy uh, an answer for something to do with me. Yeah. So. <laughs> Maybe All next right. year. Maybe next year. Josip, thank you very much for joining us. And uh, um, as that link between Croatia and the diaspora gets even smaller, it's just great to see Australian Croatians succeeding in Croatian football in the way you have. So once again, all the very best. Thank you, Tonshi. Thank you, Ante. Uh, all the best, and uh, thank you for calling me to, to, your, to your show. And uh, any time in the future, whatever you guys need, uh, I'm there. Some Good on you. Thanks for your time. Thank you. Always. Josip Shimunic, all the way from Zagreb. Absolute um, pleasure having him on the show. And thank you to everyone who's been joining us as well. We've got really, really good viewer numbers. And to everyone that's um, that's um, put any sort of uh, con uh, uh, comment in the comment section, um, I know Josip's Koum from Melbourne, Stepan Vukasovic. What's his favourite NBA team? I don't know. Does he want to answer about a basketball question on uh, um, um, on, 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 on Croatian television? I'm not too we'll sure. We'll get him on next time. We'll get him on next time. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, but, yeah, thank you so much, folks, for joining us. 
Next week, we hope to have Guelph Croatia as our club in focus, thanks to Slavicek Studio Architecture and Robbie Slavicek. So for any of your architecture needs, and it doesn't matter where you are, he's got a presence in Sydney, he's got a presence in Victoria, even here in Geelong, I do believe, and um, obviously he's got a presence in Perth. But uh, Robbie Slavicek, um, architect extraordinaire, so if you need any, any of your architectural needs, do jump on um, on with Slavicek Studio Archi- Architecture, who is our major sponsor for next week's episode. And, um, yeah, we hope to have Gwellop Croatia featured in next week's show. Ante, what are you doing this weekend? Anything this weekend, exciting? Football, 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 you know. So uh, <laughs> that's the way it is. Probably Sydney United, probably Herzl Zagreb, and then, of course, next Tuesday's the Australia Cup game. So, yeah, plus my kids are playing, so... You know, you'll see me at a football ground if you're in Sydney, that's for sure. If you do see Ante Grabovic and you are from Sydney, go up to him, say hello, say cheerio. It's it's, all, it's Actually, it is always nice to, to, to meet people who, who do listen to our show or watch our show so, uh, on a regular basis. Folks, thank you very much for that. Thank you for being a part of tonight's Ozcrow Soccer Show. Until next Wednesday night, let's hear, hope all the Australian Croatian clubs can can uh, record a win this weekend. Good night. Laku noć. Laku noć. Thank you.